button working. There we are. Yep, yeah, we're fine now. Okay, thanks, Alison. <clears throat> okay, hi everybody. Welcome to um, the PDC for for March. Uh, the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Uh, yeah, apologies from Councillor Mark Child today. Okay, thanks, Alison. Uh, Gloria so, Tano. Gloria Tano. Yeah. Can I add in Erica Kirshner, please? Okay, thanks, Les. Yeah, and Gloria has got. I know she sent me a message, uh, short notice. She's got a, a jab today, so she can't be here. Okay, I'll record those two. Thank you. Okay. Um, next item: disclosure of personal prejudicial interests. Okay, uh, and then and the fine, uh, third item on the agenda is, is minutes. Ed, are you happy to move those or happy with the minutes? Happy to move them? I move them, Chair. Thanks, Paxton. And Steve, a second. They're great. Thank you, guys. Um, and then on to the first it proper item on the agenda today um, development of volunteer strategy, which is a verbal item. And I believe Amy Hawkins is with us to to, to lead on, on that. So I'll hand over to. Um, to Amy on that. Hi, um, good afternoon. Um, thanks for um, uh, inviting me to speak about this. And um, actually, I can see uh, my colleague uh, Julia's on the call as well from um, SCVS, um, who I'm going to um, reference in this. So um, it's just to, so if it's okay, I'm just going to give you a bit of a verbal update of where we've got to in terms of this piece of work or introducing this piece of work and then telling you uh, where we've got to. So, um, just to put this in context, um, we've obviously been working a lot with alongside volunteers throughout the COVID response um, and the impact that volunteers have had has been absolutely tremendous, both with us as a council and also in um, communities. Um, Connecting volunteers within the council is also an action within our um, community support work stream of the council's recovery plan. So post COVID and, and how we sort of adapt in terms of this phase is um, we, we want to look at volunteering opportunities. So um, what we've looked at is why should we have a corporate volunteering strategy? So just to, to put it in context here. So we want to ensure that the nature and the value of volunteering involvement is understood at all levels in the council so that volunteers and the council mutually benefit from the contribution the volunteers make. Uh, we know there's hundreds of volunteers already involved uh, within the work of the council in the council and also the wider communities um, and there's a massive social benefit for this and, and also um, a benefit in terms of um, individuals and ourselves. Um, this includes within our museums, libraries, there's also school governors, PTA members, sports coaches, events, um, etc. There's a lot of friends of, you know, the, you, you'll be aware of a number of these within different um, parts of the council. Um, the range and quality of services and activities benefits from the involvement of volunteers. I think that's our starting point with this. We, we really believe this. Um, volunteering um, improves the quality of life for volunteers themselves, but also the, the communities in which they support as well. Um, but managing and supporting volunteers is really important and the volunteer strategy will ensure that there's appropriate support and recognition for those volunteering um, opportunities and supporting the volunteers themselves. So we want to do this properly. So our key prints, sorry, I must caveat that, that it is being done properly already, but we just want to make sure across the board that we continue to do it properly and we share the absolute best practice. So the key principles, so what's underpinning the um, development of the strategy so far um, is just so some of these key principles, volunteering is undertaken by choice. You know, individuals have the right to volunteer or not volunteer. Oh, Amanda's on the call as well. Sorry, I didn't see Amanda earlier. So Amanda's from SCVS as well. So um, this is obviously we're all working in, in a partnership in terms of this approach and, and particularly in terms of this development, SCVS are acting as a, a critical friend really for us as well. So supporting us, but also just um, advising and steering as well. So um, another key principle is um, volunteers um, should not normally receive or expect financial uh, rewards or incentives, but they should be reimbursed for reasonable out of pocket expenses. And again, that's something within the council that we really need to make sure we embed within all the processes and procedures. Um, the um, volunteers should enhance the quality of the councillors act uh, council's activities and um, volunteers and paid staff should be able to carry out their duties in a safe and secure and healthy environment free from harassment, intimidation, bullying, violence and discrimination. So we want to support and ensure the volunteering opportunities are the best they can be in the same way that we'd ensure that volunteers have access to appropriate opportunities for learning and development. And there should be um, processes for resolution of any issues that come up. 
both for staff and volunteers. It should be open and accessible to all. You know, we're an inclusive opportunities in terms of volunteering and um, and the contribution of the volunteers should be recognised. So in terms of the development of the strategy, our current process is that we um, have secured some short term funding um, and we've used this to temporarily increase additional hours for a, a few employees across different areas in the council um, on a task and finish basis to map existing and potential opportunities within these services and directors at uh, directorates rather for volunteering opportunities. And they're currently gathering information about the various roles that uh, are currently being undertaken, but also whether opportunities that volunteer roles could be developed um, across these services and across the council. We're mapping what uh, procedures and processes are already in place. So some departments, as I say, are really well established at hosting volunteers, while others um, uh, may never have had volunteers involved with them at all before. Um, we're also looking at the experiences of staff who've been working with volunteers and seeing what good practice has been put into place and also what support and training is required from a, a staffing perspective. And um, also information, so we're mapping out as well the information about the mutual benefits, so the benefits of volunteering uh, role to the service, so, the, um, so what it does for the service, but also what um, the volunteer gets out of it, so whether that's training, qualification, etc. Uh, there's also um, within the current process some regional funding in terms of uh, the, the other pieces. So the regional funding is being used to develop this work further as well across our organisations, uh, both with SCVS, Neathport Tower Council and the Health Board as well. So there's a, a number of pieces of work that this is contributing together. And then just finally for me, that in terms of the next steps, so the current steps is the mapping, um, then we're going to be bringing this together into the volunteering strategy itself. So um, we will be looking to co-produce that document. It's you know, something that we might draft initially, but then we'll really look to have contributions from existing volunteers, existing staff to, to add to that. Uh, we'll also be looking at developing and refreshing the existing volunteering uh, procedures and looking at f applying something consistent across the council if that's the conclusion we come to. I think that's where we feel we're going at the moment, but, but again, there might be something that works in uh, social services that you know perhaps can't be applied in exactly the same way in another directorate but but that's something we'll be looking at so that's our current position okay thanks uh, thanks thanks amy Thank um you. just want to say welcome to julia and, and amanda who who's joined us from uh SCV, scvs today who gratefully accepted my invitation to to come on um and as as amy said there's a huge amount of work that's been done across the Swansea, both within the council and and elsewhere. What that that volunteers have contributed to massively, um, and we've seen that really in focus, haven't we, with um, with with the pandemic. And I know from a, my personal perspective, in as councillor in Morriston, that the the work the SCVS it was was really well received there, and we were really grateful for the support that they provided um, to our food banks and and, and other things and. And uh, obviously, Alison Pay was also on the, the call with us today, was a relevant cabinet member, um, and it was at the heart of those discussions during the pandemic as well. So th th thank you to Alison for, for coming on. Does then, anybody have any questions to Amy or to perhaps to our guests or even to Alison about, about, the, um, uh, about the strategy moving forward? Fancy. Paxton? Uh, just a quickie, basically. Um, obviously, it's important in terms of what volunteers are doing and how much background you want to get. But certainly, the Wales Centre for Public Policy is carrying out a research exercise in terms of volunteering through this pandemic as well. Now, that might be useful. There might be some useful information there for you to pick up. Um, I know because they were in touch with me because of what we did in with community councils rather than city councils, but obviously there is a, a fair role for volunteering in that in that respect. And that's why I've been talking to them, but I'm sure they'll, they'll have some useful information for you. Thanks, Paxton. Um, I think Alison has indicated, Alison. Oh, yeah. Only yeah. in response to Paxton, really. I have been working with them, um, uh, and certainly in regards to poverty and the research, and then it, it covered quite a lot really of uh, identifying vulnerable groups and you know uh, and everything so so yeah that is that is ongoing and um 
they, they've certainly been very interested in, uh, you know, what we do volunteering wise and very interested in the Poverty Truth Commission, Amanda and Amy and I, do you know what I mean? So, uh, they, yeah, they're definitely watching what's going on. Thanks, Alison. Um, Mike White? Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, Amy, thanks very much for the presentation there. Um, just a query, really. You said that different directives are at different levels. Have you got any monitoring um, procedures in place to sort of, that we can share best practice? So we sort of one sort of encompass um, council. Yeah, if I can answer that, Chair, um, we, that's what yeah. we're working towards, Councillor White. That's what we want to have is this sort of best practice, uh, a tra shared training, shared approaches, shared procedures, just to ensure that a volunteer, if they're volunteering uh, in the libraries department or volunteering in adult services, you know, they get the same quality experience. Thank you. Th thanks, Mike. Um, one quick question I had, Amy, was around um, time skills with um, with, with the strategy, have you are you at the point where you've got a an idea, or, you know, in terms of what milestones are and, and the kind of time frame you're working towards? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, uh, well, yes and no. Um, yes, we're going to finish the mapping in by around just the week, the last week of March, and then we'll be pulling the information together. Um, hoping to get you a draft quite soon after that. So we'd like to bring that to a future meeting if that's okay with you. So that yeah. uh, and then, uh, but we'd like to co-produce it further. So we it will take a bit of time to take it out and discuss it with people. But we certainly want to be at that draft stage uh, very soon towards the end of the month. Okay, that would be great. I think it would be really, uh, really useful for the for the committee to obviously to to see that and um, either presented by yourself, Amy, or possibly by the members of staff that you referenced and when you were yeah. talking that, that that have been. Because um, I think it's always nice for us as councillors to get to meet some of the officers on the ground as well. I think it's always, I think personally, I always find that really helpful as well. Um, um, just in terms of um, Amanda um, and you, that are on you today, your guests, um, is there anything that you'd want to contribute at, the, at this point from a from an SCVS uh, perspective? Um. I, I basically forgive me. I'm I'm gate gate crashing a little bit because I am um, I have a, have a, a bit of a meeting clash, which is to do with this absolute topic and the work that we're doing. So so I, I literally said to Kerry, I could just turn up to to basically just come and commend the council for uh, for for starting to do some sort of significant strategic work around this um, that builds on all of the you know relationships that you know have been strengthened i would say over the past year um so i really just wanted to come along and say hello um to commend you and to say you know scvs we obviously run the swansea volunteer center volunteering is well it's it's the um you know if we were the stick of rock volunteering is the word through through our stick of rock in scvs um, so just to say we're absolutely here to support the work um, in whatever way that we can and really looking forward to, to I suppose, you know, thinking of Swansea as, as a, a council of volunteering excellence, um, you know, because I suppose that's where that's where we probably share a vision that we just do it really, really well. Um, and forgive me if I if I actually dip out, but my colleague Julia runs the Swansea Volunteer Centre. Um, and is our volunteering expert within SCVS. So it's lovely to see so many of you again, um, and actually after quite a long time. Um, but forgive me if I, if I, yeah, gate crash and dive out again. Um, but, Thanks, but Amanda. You, you have obviously my, my contact details, and I'm always more than happy to, you know, to talk to any of you about this or other work. So thank you, and lo lovely to see you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you very much. Julia, are you okay to come in at this point and say a little bit about maybe about your role? I am indeed. Um, um, thank you, councillor, for the formal invite. And thanks to all the, the councillors and officers for having us here today. Um, my role, as Amanda said, is, is, the, is the lead officer within Swansea Volunteer Centre. I, I've been at SCVS for 17 years having come from democratic services at Swansea Council. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy in both camps here today. Um, <laughs> obviously, I've done a lot of work over many years with your officers at Swansea Council, and there are some amazing examples over a long, long period of time 
of volunteer involvement and indeed volunteer management uh, within Swansea Council. And I think Amy mentioned quite a lot of, of roles, but there are thousands of volunteers, uh, I would suggest, associated with Swansea Council. And so um, I think it is, it is really a, a great time following the massive contribution, as you rightly said, uh, Councillor, about the, you know, that's happened throughout this pandemic, but over, you know, over generations as well. Um, we're lucky to be a city of, of givers. We're a, a city of people that have wanted to be part of the community's response to any given issue at any given time. Um, and volunteering is is very much um, one of the ways that we can do that. And I think it'd be, it's really useful for future workforce development as well, of course. A great way to make your voice heard and for people within our communities to, to, to kind of chip in so that this city becomes uh, the greatest city in Wales, which it obviously is anyway. <laughs> so great. My role is to support any officers who are um, given the task within Swansea Council to, to help them to develop a volunteer strategy. And I do that with a number of different third sector and statutory sector uh, organisations at any given time. Um, it's my absolute um, joy to to work with Swansea Council around developing appropriate roles, around helping you think about some of the resources that may be necessary to, to push this into, as Amanda said, you know, an, an example of extremely brilliant practice. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, thanks, Julia. Has anybody, anybody got a question for Julia at this point? No, I can't see any indicator. That's great. Thanks, Julia, Th and, th and thanks so much for coming coming on. And obviously, um, you know, you've got a key, you've got a key role there in terms of liaising with with us in, in the council. So I think it's really important that we've got you um, on the committee, and um, hopefully, you'd be happy to continue to attend in while we while we're overseeing the, the development of the of the strategy. Indeed, um, councillor. Okay, great. Um, I was just going to um, uh, say to Amy, I think uh, the next meeting is April the 21st, I believe. Um, so in terms of what you were talking about, Amy, around um, ar around kind of the, the, the mapping exercise, if you, if you even if even if you're not at a point where the, you know, you've, you've finalised that, um, it would be quite good to have maybe a, an update on on some of the sort of over, overarching findings or some of the interesting things that you found along the way, even if it's not a finished article, would that be something that would be okay? Yeah, absolutely fine. Yeah, and, okay, and we can also add in some of an update of the regional work that's been happening as well, because all the regional approaches about improving everything at well and enhancing everything across all our organisations and, and across the counties. So, yeah. There we are, Fab. Um, would it, to, to, um, Question my luck a little bit again, but uh, would it be okay if we had something around what something um, on p in paper form or electronically I mean, um, around what you've discussed today as well, really, so that um, the committee can have kind of a, a visual reminder of the key, the key principles that kind of yeah. you didn't have a, a lot of time this time, and we we all know how immensely busy you are, Amy. So that, that's totally understandable. Uh, but I think that I think that will be useful from the committee's point of view, so that uh, we've we've got we've got that on record as well. Then, yeah, fine. Okay, thank you. Um, great. Has anybody got any further questions on this topic? Obviously, it's it's just today is just a little taster, really. It's just just the starting point uh, for us, although. Obviously, it's a hugely important piece of work, just as as the other piece of work that we look can come and look to look at is. And again, we and really ex, really exciting, I think. And um, I think you know, as councillors, we need to be at the heart of of this kind of these kind of development of, of this strategy and this type of work in in the authority because we, we all rely so heavily on volunteers in our own wards and communities, don't we? So and, and you know, we most of us were volunteers before we were councillors as well so we have a bit of empathy with them um okay uh, that's great thanks very much thanks amy for coming on thanks uh, thanks julia as well and we look forward to seeing you again uh, next month if you free to stay or stay on the meeting um the next is it okay uh, if we go into the meeting that amanda was just chairing <laughs> sorry i've okay, got to joke that one me. thanks all to you Car carry on oh, thank you very and, much and if it's okay with you to be rude i'll pop off as well to that meeting
That's fine, Julia. Thanks very much okay, for your time. Thank you both. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Okay, um, so we're on to the next item on the agenda, which is an update on the Young Carer Strategy. Now, Gavin um, sent me a message earlier on today, about this morning. Unfortunately, I was in a conference, so I didn't see it until just before I came on. Um, and he he can't join us until until about, I think it was a quarter to five. So what I, I'll just give a brief update on the Young Carers. The, there isn't a huge amount to update on, as far as I'm aware. The um, the young carers, um, what did Gavin call it last time? The um, the the group that he's put to, that they've put together to develop the young carer strategy, the multi agency group that he was talking about last time, which includes um, departments within the council such as education, adult services, obviously children's services, um, and also some third sector representation that's not been able to meet until I believe it's the first week of April. So that will be the, the next time that that meets. Well, I think it's something like the 4th of April or something like that. And um, and as per the last committee meeting, Gavin has um, invited me to attend those meetings from now on. So I uh, I plan to attend those meetings. So there's a, a, con a consistent link between the committee and, and the work that's being done. And then Gavin will then come and, and report to the to the committee as and when there's developments, hopefully. So we know the timeline is, to, is that hopefully that they'll have a strategy by the end of, I think it was May, April or, and in a draft version anyway. So as far as I'm aware, that is still the um, the, the timeline. So so there's not a lot to update on that from my perspective until we've, we've had that meeting in, in the first week of April. And then so the next week that we should have um, uh, quite a bit to update the committee on. Is it oh, is that okay? Anybody got any questions around that? No. Okay. Um, I was hoping he might have joined us early so he could have uh, he could have taken questions and that. But that's but that but that's okay. If if um, I'll I'll probably catch up with Gavin after this after you everybody's gone today. And if there's anything that you need updating on, I'll I'll, put, I'll pop that in an email to you all. Okay, um, so there's, no, there's nothing further to further to add to that. So um, uh, the next item of the agenda is, is the work plan. I believe I can't quite see my my agenda. Is is the work plan? So the work plan, as you know, is that we'll be working on both the young care strategy and um, until around till May probably now, um, and then twin tracking that with the development of the of overseeing the development of the volunteer strategy as well so and that will take us through then until the summer um, and at which point we'll start we'll put then start to think about as a committee what the what the third and final uh, area of work that we want to focus on so we maybe we can add that to um maybe we can add that actually to the agenda for maybe probably not april because we'll have two things that we will we, we'll be feeding back on then maybe may I'll speak to Alison about that, and then we can um, start having to think about that. Some about what what you guys would be interested in, and what's feasible. Um, Alison, yeah. Yes, chair. It's just to say that there's no PDCs in May. Um, oh, they'll because start of the again elections. Then, yeah, because the elections, so they'll start again in June. Okay, so it'll be, it'll be June, and that's fine. Just push everything back a month. Okay. Um, Alison Poo, Alison? Yeah, only just to say, when you are looking at your work plan, I think, and plus we can have a conversation out to yours, but, but I, I have suggested that um, from an employability side of things, um, because we've taken on the Kickstart programme, where we'd be looking for placements within the council, that maybe they bring it to you a PDC, Kerry, and, um, and help, because we've got lots of outside agencies happy to take on um, a, a paid member of staff for six months for experience, but we are mm. struggling within our own organisation with the, the the usual like uh, in place they used to take in people. Do, do you know what I mean? But yeah. um, but I I did wonder whether you could work with like Elliot Williams, Paul Ralph's team to bring it through PDC to give it that mm -hmm. bit of weight behind it. To, yeah, I to, mean to come back out. I I think that's. I mean, it's. I don't know what the other committee members. I'll bring Mike White in in a minute. I know you've put your hand up, Mike, but to just deal with this for a sec. I think that sounds like a really interesting topic, Alison. It's 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 different to what to what we've done up until this point. So I'll 
that makes it um, interesting from my perspective as well. Yeah. Um, plus, I, plus, I think you know it, it's it's nice to look at these these other kinds of issues like employability, which is so That's important right. for us. Um, I don't know what other committee members, and perhaps if if the other committee's members are, are happy with that, then we can bring it forward maybe to look at it in June. It would be June probably, Alison. Yeah, and that'd be great. Employability is huge for the council. We yeah. we have, you know, thousands of people a year come through our books. We've got about 20 different schemes that we are a front door for, like social services. We're a front door, we triage and send people to the right projects. Do, do you know yeah. what I mean? But, yeah. uh, you, you know, I, I think it could do with a home almost you know you, you know so um, yeah well, that's that's that, that sounds that sounds good i mean um, okay we'll narrow yeah. that down we'll we'll you know yeah um, okay brilliant. um mike mike white yes yeah, th thanks thanks kerry um just a thought perhaps looking with young carers the the um rights respect in unchr um i know this we come in come into this authority 214 yeah. being previously now being reviewed but you know, taking this on board and taking it further uh, uh, with the with the authority to sort of have joined up working as a council. Plus, this could be plus looked at to support the young carers, so they know that they obviously right respecting uh, for, for 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 children. Okay. I know Jane, right. Jane. I know Jane Whitmore. Yeah. Um, done a, a heck of a lot of work on this when we first brought it in. So J Jane would have uh, quite, quite, quite a lot of knowledge and uh, ex experience into this. Um, uh, uh, pro, you know, UNCHR um, legislation. Okay. Okay. We. I can check check that out with 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 Gavin, um, Mike, because like like lots of these things, they might well, they might well you know um, considered that. In the in the development of it anyway, Alison, are you indicating again? Was that a yeah? I have? need to answer, Mike. I, the meeting before this, funny enough, was exactly that, Mike, with Jane Whitmore, uh, and about young carers and young people and everything. So, um, um, we're certainly going to be trying to tie it in, Kerry, through the Human Rights City that we, you know, we're sort of working on and going forward, uh, and everything. So, you, you know what I mean? I don't know whether you want to be on that committee or, is it, you know, you're more than welcome. Do, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Uh, and then you can tie back in through PDC. But okay. Mike's right, Jane had done a lot of work on it and she's still developing it, you know, because oh, it, it's very, it's, it's sort of a lot of councils have said, oh, well, we'll have a, a, a youth council or a youth assembly or these and things. But we're a bit more, we, we're keen on you to do, to try and really reach all different groups of people not just people who are confident enough to come and do a yeah. council if you know what i mean you know we wanted to be able to reach make sure that we reached young carers vulnerable people you, you, you know so jane is on the right path there so um uh, but that'd be good to come back here and um okay give you an update and everything okay gavin gavin has just joined us um, hey gav Alison, do you want to do you want to make, say start again around what Jane Whitmore has been doing? Because Gav, I imagine Gavin will know all of this probably. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, but, just, but just so that he understands what we were talking about as he joined us. Okay, yeah. I, I just been in a meeting. Mike White just brought up you now about young carers um, and, you know, about people having a voice, Gavin, you know, when it comes a lot through um, uh, the corporate parenting. And we've done a lot with the sort of um, care leavers having a voice. And, and all that, but we have we do get quite a bit of pressure on us, especially perhaps sometimes from maybe education or something. They say, well, we'll have a youth council or we'll have, you know, or a youth assembly or. But one, the very staff resource is huge because really it has to run like our council. You, you, do, do you know what I mean? So, and my feeling is you'll end up just getting the really confident children who are right. able to have these discussions there and actually you, you're not actually targeting get, getting to you from the really vulnerable children out there and, and who have really experienced issues and problems so th that's the meeting i was at with jane now so that we're looking you, you know do we far more co-production in a co-productive way you, you know trying to meet with as many groups as possible in your youth services you, you know and we know that 
the research at the moment is showing that um, the under 25s, the youth, the young people have actually been hit harder than older people in mm. regards to loneliness and poverty and, and everything. COVID has really, really hit young people. So we're keen. So that's the sort of conversation I'm having with Mike now in the group. We're keen to be able to speak to a wider range of people and just to have a council. Yeah, um, I mean, it's kind of quite uh, quite a long running debate, I guess, isn't it, about the kind of structures that you have in terms of engaging people in the conversations yeah. that, that that you need to have. And I guess you're right, there's, there's all, always pressure around having more formal structures that people understand, you, you know, such as youth councils uh, and so on and so forth. And I guess a lot of those still have their place. Obviously, a lot of schools will, will, will still have school councils and, and things like that. But I guess a lot of the work that, that Jane and some of her team have done over the years has been around what they call the big conversation yeah. structure, which is a more informal conversation structure as well. So it allows you to um, uh, structure a conversation that you can go out and have with any group of young people and allow them to lead the conversation and express their views in, in the way that they're happy to express their views. And often you can get more meaningful views out of people, yeah. especially from young people when you operate in that way. It, it doesn't take away from some of the formal structures like youth councils and, you know, we, we, we've seen those in the past. But like you said, it's quite difficult to strike um, the right balance of representation on those because you do often find that those who are more able um, and, and feel more comfortable to do that type of work don't necessarily come from the, the vulnerable backgrounds. So it, it's always trying to get the right balance between the, those different approaches that, that, that's the kind of key to it. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Alison. Mike, is that a legacy hand or have you... No, you no, no, it's just something I just want to sort of follow up with Gavin, I could. Yeah, Gavin, as I said, we, this was the, the UNC of Child in Swansea it was launched in 2014 and Keith Towler was the Children's Commissioner then, the Welsh Government, come, actually come down and actually um, launched it in Swansea, down in Harvard, in, uh, in Penter Harvard and, and Harvard Primary. Uh, and I say, but but this is something then which is shows and I recognise that the children know their rights so under the charter, you know, yeah, the yeah. see it's charter, so that you know they they know all the different sort of um, sort of items within with, within that charter. But as I say, that was sort of seven years ago. Obviously, a lot of those children that were in senior sort of school then were obviously moved on. So you've got another obviously. Children coming through now, that's a start in school and that, uh, so 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 they can make make those aware as well of what it actually means. The UNCH uh, rights respecting um, charter for, for 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 young children. Yeah, absolutely. You know the the rights respecting um, schools agenda has always been really. You, you know, really big and and it's been a really positive thing in Swansea, like you said, and I guess. It's it's how we maintain those bigger pieces of work and how well embedded they are within the kind of cultures in schools, which are quite kind of different. But, you know, I, I, hopefully, you know, a lot of those schools still embed those same principles. Obviously, you know, the UNCRC and their entitlements are still there. So it's hoping that, that, that schools are obviously have that well embedded so that all the new generations as they're coming through are always aware of their rights. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I, it would be difficult for me to take a view on on all the schools across Swansea, but I, I am aware of a number of schools that still do that very, very well, which is which is great. Mm. Hopefully, most of them are, if not all. Yeah, yeah. Paxton. Thank you, Chairman. I was just going to say there's quite a, an extensive report yesterday to the scrutiny program committee. Young lady by the name of Katie Spendiff will probably be known to you. Um, yes. She certainly spoke quite long and quite hard for about half hour in this sort of area, I must admit. So there's obviously a lot going on there as well. So I don't know whether we can pick up or tap into that. There's uh, <coughs> further information as far as we are concerned in this respect. I don't know what you think, Gavin. 
Yeah, so um, you've got um, Katie Spendiff and Julie Gosney um, are two of the participation workers who work under Jane Whitmore. Yeah. Um, and they've been on board, if you like, throughout all of the stages that you've talked about. So certainly the rights respecting programme, but also that that the discussion that Alison was alluding to about the balance between having formal structures and the informal structures. Um, and you, you know, they've been big advocates of that big conversation structure and, and the value that that can bring. And rather than having this kind of council that relies on young people coming in, it's about, um, particularly for us as officers, being able to go out to young people in environments that they're comfortable in and allowing them to lead and have open conversation in, in the way that they would like to and that they're most comfortable in. So, yeah, you, you know, certainly um, Katie, I think, has gone on. I think she's, you know, doing a doctorate at the moment in that in sort of participation methodology. So she's somebody who's particularly useful if you want to have a really um, detailed understanding of of the evidence and the research and, and the kind of approaches and what the different values are. So, yeah, she's definitely a good person uh, to involve in your discussions. Uh, Les, as well as what? Well. Yeah, I was just wondering what Mike was talking about that was launched back in 2014. And I can never remember the initial, so I'm not going to try. Um, but I'm wondering, is there a day that where we celebrate that? And if not, could we invent one? Because as you say, you're quite right. Things like that, they've got great momentum to start with. But in time, that momentum sort of slackens off if you're not careful. I am sure, like you say, I'm sure a lot of schools still um, do a really good job uh, pursuing that. But there's always that chance if you don't keep just reminding people, um, it starts to uh, tail off a bit, doesn't it? So I just wondered if there was a way we could sort of celebrate it each year somehow, just lift the profile a bit. Yeah, there's there's certainly um, an annual day around the the UNCRC and and, and the rights of the child. Um, there, there's you know there's definitely a day on that. There's probably a number of other days that are associated as well with similar aspects around young people's voice. You know, I think one of the things about the the kind of days is there's almost so many days for everything yeah. now. It is quite hard to to, yeah. to kind of keep track of it all. Um, but but you're absolutely right there, Leslie. It's how, how you maintain momentum and keep it there. I think at the time, Keith Taylor was the children's commissioner, uh, and that was a real focus at that point in time on his work. Obviously, now we have um, a different children's commissioner with a slightly different focus. And, and I know a lot, you know, their most recent report and work that they've been looking at is about the impact of the pandemic. Um, so they've done quite extensive research, which I'm sure will inform their plan now and their thinking going forward. So it, it might be worth you you staying connected with, with that work that's been done by the commissioner, because um, it will be interesting to see what, what their focus is going forward now. Yeah. Uh, Jan? Yeah, just saying, uh, Kerry, there used to be a day that was celebrating the rights of the child because Martin Sheen mm -hmm. Came to one of the celebrations. November twentieth, I think. Yeah. November the twentieth. Just speaking for Katie and for uh, for Jane Whitmore, I've worked with the both of them, and they're really dedicated, passionate yeah. people. So they'd be very welcome, Kerry, to come on yeah. board with us, and I'm sure, especially Katie, with the you the rights of the child, she is passionate about it, very yeah. much so. Yeah, I think you. I think you meant Michael Sheen, Jan. Michael, what did I say? Michael Martin Sheen. Sheen. Sorry, Martin Michael Sheen. Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> it was up yeah. in one of the, I, was it Pentra Harbour? I think it was, Mike. Was it, it was up in one of the schools, yeah. Yeah. It was brilliant. Okay. Thanks, Jan. Uh, just before, before you, just before you join this, Gavin, I gave a, a, a brief update on, on where we were, because we weren't sure whether you were going to join us, because time, because we were racing through the agenda. So I just mentioned that the, the group around the uh, strategy is meeting in early April. Um, but that's all I've really said. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to update or um, if it's kind of dependent on on that on that to move things forward, really. Yeah, I, I can certainly just give you a quick update on, on a few things. So interestingly, talking about days, it has been uh, Young Carers Day this week. It was on Monday. Um, I know Agir um, talked to you a little bit about that um, when, when she joined us in the group as well. 
and that their intention was that it wasn't about having one day, but they were actually making it Young Carers Action Week. So throughout this week, they've been doing all sorts of different um, events with uh, young carers and their families. Obviously, a lot of those have had to be online, unfortunately, which yeah. is not not quite the same, mm -hmm. but still, um, as far as I'm aware, has been has been going well. Um, as, as part of that um, action week that's been taking place, um, we completed the work on the new ID card that, that we updated you on previously, uh, and we've used um, the action week this week to launch um, to launch that new ID card and the process for it. And uh, not on our own. I think we're one of ten local authorities that have all used the opportunity of having Young Carers Day, if you like, to to mm. use that as a bit of a launch pad um, for being able to do it. Obviously, again, everyone's had to adapt that on the basis of it's, you know, that we're still in lockdown and, you know, using virtual and digital means to do so. Um, but, you know, a lot of the focus, if you like, for Agir and the team have really been focused on gearing up to this week and putting things in place, um, which has been, you know, really positive. There's been a lot of press release work gone on about that, um, gone on there as well. So, um, we we did a press release in Swansea that went out via corporate comms. It's gone into the education newsletter, the child and family newsletter. Um, it's YMCA obviously have their own channels that they've put that out through across Quivis, so it's gone out across Wales. Um, we liaised then so that the minister um, gave a quote to, uh, around it as well that we used and. Um, and our cabinet member Elliot, I don't know if he's in the meeting today, no. but um, he, he um, also w was part of the release and gave a, a put a put a quote into that as well. So so it's been quite a positive week, timely week to to have have the conversation and and for other, for, for other people to mention, you know how you know you can use days and things to to to, to bring awareness, which, which a lot of it is about. Uh, and I guess, Kerry, one of the things that you, you've kind of updated on is uh, about the group. So we've obviously had a working group. Uh, and as we've come up to the end of the year, we've kind of revised that group, looked at the kind of key things that we've achieved and obviously what our priorities are moving forward with the, 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 the main priority, particularly in this early stage in the next few months, will be around the completion of the strategy. And as part of that as well, we've revised um, who will be attending that group. So obviously, Kerry, now you, you're invited to be part of that. Yeah. So hopefully that really provides that, that kind of link between our, our work and yourself as a PDC, um, which is great from my perspective because you're not entirely reliant on me and you can actually see firsthand what's going on uh, uh, as well as just relying on me. You know, I could be telling you all sorts, couldn't I? So at least you... Uh, <laughs> hopefully get some assurance in that regard. Um, and, and also one of the, the things that we've been talking about there is the importance of getting, we, we have education represented, but the importance of actually having schools on board as well when developing the strategy, because a lot of actions relate to how well schools will actually be able to embed this work and undertake it. So we're recruiting into those uh, at the moment, but it is a very difficult time for schools given how many different challenges they've got right at this point in time around, you know, restart in school. And, and obviously that is the overwhelming priority that, that we all want is that they focus on getting children back to school. Um, so we will do our best to engage with them and we're, we're having that conversation about how we might best do that. But obviously that, that, that does have implications for just some of our timeframes. Uh, what we don't want to do is commit schools to things in the strategy without making sure that they've yeah. really shared their view on that because it, it may well be then counterproductive when uh you know i'm never that keen on just uh fronting up in in front of all the head teachers and announcing what i think they should be doing in a strategy it's never <laughs> the uh, it's never the, the approach to take <laughs> so um so we we are endeavouring to do that in the right way and make sure that they uh, that they're on board as best as they can at this point in time. Mm. It's a brave man that will do that, Gavin. Yeah, yeah, not a foolish one. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been there. I've been there a few times um, w yeah. with a few difficult issues, and um, it's always worth making sure we do it in the right way before stepping into that forum, yeah. and rightly so. Yeah, I think on 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 that specific point, Gavin, there's obviously an education PDC. Um, so I mean, in in the medium term, if if that's something that perhaps we're struggling with, it's something that we could raise with them, and something maybe we could do in. To um, sort of together, because I've talked to Robert Smith, who was the chair of that, about us potentially dovetailing on certain things, because I know they're looking at something. It's not young carers, obviously, but it's vulnerable learners. So it may it may be be something we can tie in with them to add a little bit of um, pressure, as it were, from a different angle on on schools to engage. But um, we we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, we. Um... We had a new meeting that started up this week, which was with a head teacher group, which was the heads wanting to engage uh, more closely with the work in child and family services uh, in terms of development in a number of areas. So I, I did raise um, that issue there um, and it was particularly around not just the work with young carers, but obviously we have a lot of the different groups that could be seen as vulnerable or need to be thought about in a specific way, whereby we need their, the engagement with the, the heads or at least with who, who they feel would best represent schools. Um, so when we meet next, we're going to revisit that conversation just to have a look at making sure that the schools are appropriately engaged in all those kind of little topic areas and that have representation and that we understand what the roles of those heads are so that it's actually those heads themselves take them back to the wider head teacher group and actually share that information and seek their views as opposed to um, uh, so some of us as officers who aren't um, head teachers for example you know it, it actually comes better from their own that they're engaged in that and that they lead that dialogue with their with their with their colleagues yeah. so we're going to revisit that for all of the different working groups so hopefully that will help us um, bring that together and make sure young carers are, are represented then with them. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you, Gavin. Any of you got any, any questions for Gavin before we bring this to a close? I uh, can't see anyone indicating. Gavin, thanks very much for, for popping on. Oh, Kerry, just, on, just, an, just an option for Gavin, really. Perhaps even if they could do an inset uh, within cluster schools via the comp, because obviously cluster schools takes in you know, seven, eight schools along with a comp, you know, three plus, then it as, as an inset day. J just an idea to float Jill. Yeah, no, thanks, Mike. That, that is, it is really useful. And that that is one of the things that's come up with schools is how do we best use the, the school cluster structure when we want to discuss things? Um, I guess sometimes that can work really well. I guess the only difficulty sometimes is different clusters have different priorities. Um, and so it's easier yeah. to get into yeah. some clusters than other clusters. And yeah, it's, time that's, skills are hard then. I, I guess what we wanted to say to, to the heads as well is that those are the decisions that they need to think about and that they advise us on as opposed to us trying to advise them how they should do it. We, we, we're happy to work in whatever way best suits them. It's, uh, you know, we, have, we do have a large number of schools, obviously, in Swansea. I, have a guest, obviously. My <laughs> I was just going to say, you got a young assistant behind you, Gav. Yeah, yeah, yeah my administrative support has turned up. <laughs> you can't believe how she's grown, my God. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't turn it off. <laughs> right, that seems an appropriate time to bring you to occasion. Thanks, Gavin. Really appreciate the update. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Okay. All right, nice guys. to see you all. Do you want to say goodbye, Mila, to everyone? Bye. <laughs> that was uh, very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we are. Makes a change from a dog or a cat. My God, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Last time I saw that when she was a baby. <laughs> it was a baby, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, so uh, last item in the agenda then, we finished the agenda actually, the week we talked briefly about the work run for Gavin joined us. So the next meeting is on the Wednesday the 21st of April. So Thanks very much for, for your attendance and uh, thanks to the officers for their support. Thank you, Kat. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.